It's been about two and a half weeks since Red Dead Online went standalone, and more than two years since the Red Dead Online beta officially launched worldwide, and in that amount of time, I've logged just under 2,800 gameplay hours between all three platforms, those being PC, PS4, and Xbox One, and I still think I have a long way to go. I've shared some major milestones with you guys over the past few months, like hitting 1,000 gold back in April, 100,000 over the summer, and most recently 2,000 gold bars a few weeks ago that I've just saved up at any one time, and I am working on earning more in total. Throughout all this time, there have been so many good pieces of content that I've enjoyed in this game that there are a few that stand out most to me as well. They either have helped me so much that I don't necessarily know what I would do without them, or they just make my gameplay sessions more enjoyable, more profitable, and overall just a better experience than what it would be if I didn't have these items purchased. So today, I will be sharing with you the best investments I have ever made for my character in Red Dead Online, and hopefully, whether you're a newer player, this will help you get the leg up really early on, or even if you're someone who's been playing a long time, you'll find that we have a lot of common interests as players, and if there's something you think I should add to the utmost important and best investments and purchases, please let me know in the comments. I'm just really curious to hear about your Red Dead Online priorities. So if you enjoyed this video at any point, or if you just find it helpful, let me know by dropping a like on it. And if you want to stay up to date and in the loop with everything Red Dead Online, consider hitting that subscribe button with your bell notifications turned on. So let's start with some specifics first, especially if you're just starting out. These are things you can acquire pretty much right out of the gate when you hop into Red Dead Online, and for number one, that is the Lancaster Repeater. It's the best all-around repeater and weapon in my opinion. I actually have to try and use other weapons because this is the default weapon that I gravitate to when playing. You can still preserve three-star pelts on smaller animals and bigger animals as well with headshots. It's great for enemies, both just normal free roam enemies, stranger mission enemies, bounties, dynamic events. It's fantastic in PvP. It's always been like a top performing and top contender weapon in my opinion. It's great with legendary bounties. You unlock it at rank 14. It costs $243 and it holds 14 rounds. It has great accuracy, range, damage, reload speed, fire rate, all of that stuff. So all around, I highly recommend the Lancaster Repeater. But before we move on to number two, I should also mention the order I'm ranking these things in are really in no specific order. I just thought before recording this video, I thought like maybe I would do it that way. But I think it's best that if you treat all these as being all extremely valuable and you try to pursue them all when you play this game. So number two, the Paint It Black Ability Card. Tier 1 costs $50, Tier 2 requires 10,000 XP using the card and also costs $350 to upgrade to, and then finally Tier 3, which I recommend you upgrade any ability card to, takes another 15,000 XP using this ability card, and then it also costs $500 to reach Tier 3. This ability card allows you to paint an X on like any single target, any enemies, animals, so it's great for hunting if you need that clean headshot for the 3-star pelt, it's great for legendary animals maintaining accuracy, it's great in PvP situations to hit headshots, it's just great getting headshots all around with this ability card has always been good since the February 26, 2019 update. But not only that, you know, painting the target is important. I think if you're a player who likes to pace their shots or you just want to take out multiple enemies at once, especially when you don't have the attention on enemies and they're all just laying around. But my favorite thing about this card is it eliminates bloom with your weapon, which is basically your accuracy. You know, it's tough fighting against all the screen sway and the weapon sway and also dealing with the bloom with each weapon, which is basically that circle that goes in and out when you're aiming. Obviously, the close the closer that circle is together to where it's just a dot, the more accurate you're going to be. And when it's, you know, the circle is really far and spread out wide, you can basically miss your shot and it will go and the bullet will travel anywhere in that circle. So it's important with Painted Black, it cancels Bloom, which is my favorite part about that ability card. Now, number three is the Turkmen Horse. All the Turkmen's are fantastic and we actually have four new ones on the way this spring. I have a video on those that was uploaded about a week ago if you want to check those out. But I love the Turkmen's, the Dark Bay Turkmen, the Silver Gray Turkmen, the Golden Turkmen. I'd say probably the Golden's my favorite, but these have helped me out so much in Red Dead Online as well. They have pretty much a full health bar. They have like three quarters full of a stamina ring, and they're just fantastic. They handle great. They're fast. They're not, you know, any of the fastest, like the Norfolk Roadster's faster, the Arabian's faster, the Missouri Foxtrotters are pretty much just as fast, but the Turkmen's have a very long stride to them, and you'll find yourself basically being a tank in gunfight situations where you need this horse to be extremely reliable, and that's why I would recommend the Turkmen Horse as one of your top horses that you get in your stables. Now, number four, something that I think everyone can take advantage of moving forward, especially if you missed other ones, are the Outlaw Passes. Each Outlaw Pass, in my opinion, is very important to get. If not for the limited time value of the items, you know, we've had Arthur Morgan's Summer Gunslinger outfit in the past, 
I missed on PC Outlaw Pass 1. Everyone on PC missed it actually because it never released. So I don't think we'll ever get that considering now we're on Outlaw Pass 4. But if even if it's not for the limited time value of items and you don't mind missing out on things that will never be offered again, we also have new stat changing upgrades and items and equipment probably coming soon in future passes. Currently we have ammo upgrades right now and we will be getting more in Outlaw Pass 5 as well. Right now we only have it for like shotguns and some other things, but we will be having them for like repeaters and revolvers in the future and arrows and stuff. So it's probably important that you get these as well. Each outlaw pass, you make your gold back. And it seems like we may be heading towards a trend where you're starting to not make as much gold back as you paid for on the pass, but it's still very good. I recommend you get them because if you miss these outlaw passes, these things never come back into the game. The only thing that's actually technically made a return twice is Arthur Morgan's signature hat, his gambler hat. It was offered with the summer gunslinger outfit in outlaw pass two. And now we have Arthur Morgan's winter outfit in outlaw pass four. So even though the two outfits aren't the same, of course, his hat applies to both. So people who missed outlaw pass two are really lucky to get it in outlaw pass four here. I would be very, very confident in saying that it probably won't make a return after this. So it's probably best you get the outlaw pass and rank it up to get that outfit. Now, number five is we have the camp stew pot. This is also very important. So you can keep your cores gold to help your tonics last longer in gunfights and out in the open world and on the frontier. And just to take care of your character as well. You know, I always eat superior stew when I start up the game. It only requires three big game meat and it keeps my cores gold for one in-game day and lasts in the stew pot for three in-game days. You also have the special stews with which keep your cores gold for three days and last in the pot for five days, but they typically take sometimes collectibles and other items, which I don't necessarily want to go out into the world and find. I'll just kill an alligator, skin it, and boom, I can make superior stew with just that one thing. So the camp stew pot's very important. We also have, for number six, the camp fast travel post. It's, I use this pretty much all the time. I start my gameplay sessions at camp and I usually use this fast travel post from there when I go about my grind and it's just overall incredibly convenient if you're also far away from camp when you finish a mission and you know it's in a good spot like say near a town that you want to travel to but you want to save some money you can just load to an entirely new lobby and load at your camp and then you could just either take your horse to town or fast travel there for like a dollar. And you could basically go all the way from Tumbleweed, have your camp near, uh, you know, Sandini in the swamps and fast travel there essentially for free just by loading into a new lobby. Quick, poor man's tip for you guys who don't want to spend a lot of money on fast travel. Overall though, fast traveling at your camp is cheaper than anywhere else in the world too. Like if you're trying to travel and fast travel back to your camp, that's a good idea. And the last investments I want to mention in this video would be roles like the collector role, the moonshiner role, or even more broadly, all roles in general, collector, moonshiner, bounty hunter, trader, and the naturalist. Specifically when you start out in Red Dead Online, I highly recommend you get the collector role first. And with this role, you can make thousands of of dollars every single day with like a minimal time investment now with the recent nerfs you know it's not as lucrative as it used to be in the past over the past year that the role has been released but it's still the best way to rank up fast and make money in this game i have multiple role tip videos coming out soon for newer players overall the collector role is going to be super super helpful when you're just starting out here in red that online and definitely reference the red that online collector map and the rdo free roam maps down in the description those are like your red dead online bible when it comes to the moonshiner and trader roles, I'm doing like my typical gameplay session will be about four hours on the day. And I'm doing four moonshiner cells in that time. I'm doing one trader cell. I'm doing multiple bounty hunts. I'm collecting items off of dead bodies while looting them. And I'm getting those collectibles. I'm doing the naturalist role to get easy materials for trader, all of that stuff. So overall, just mix up all your roles and you will be making a ton of money, a ton of gold and a ton of XP here in Red Dead Online. With all of that being said, that is where we will wrap up this video. These are my most important investments and best purchases that I think you should consider making as well in Red Dead Online. And I'd love to know what your top five or top 10 are in the comments section down below as well. Maybe we'll get some really rare or unheard of answers for some players too, so that would be interesting. But here on this channel, we consistently talk about news, information, tips, tricks, and leaks, and I'll keep you guys updated here on the channel daily. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you guys also want to follow me over on Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram, those are the best places to get connected with me outside of YouTube. With all that said, thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a fantastic day, and I will see you guys in the next Red Dead Online. Online video. Adios, amigos.